Welcome back. Let's pretend Kim Jong-un snapped his finger and now all of Europe is under the ocean. What will happen? The largest ever earthquake would hit the entirety of the world. Its magnitude is projected to be around 10 enough to shake the entirety of the world. Places like Antarctica would get a 5 magnitude earthquake. The safest country would be the south of Argentina because unlike Chile, it would be less prone to tsunamis. Speaking of tsunamis, the sudden effect would cause a 50 meters wave to come to the east coast of North America, likely destroying New York, Washington, and even Florida. We would suddenly have water in the Sahara Desert and 75 meter waves in Turkey because Turkey would not disappear. Also imagine all of the volcanoes that would erupt underwater, especially in Iceland. Despite the tsunami effects, Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan and Kazakhstan would have access to the Atlantic Ocean. This could help these countries economically, especially Kazakhstan since it is the largest uranium producer. Caspian Sea, Black Sea, Mediterranean Sea, Baltic Sea, Nordic Sea would be included in the Atlantic Ocean. The same goes for most of the important rivers in Europe, including the loads of lakes in Finland, Sweden and Norway, making the Atlantic Ocean with more fresh water. However, without Europe, the water level of the ocean would be way lower and with more fresh water. You'd think that's a good thing for global warming, but well, it's the complete opposite. Even though countries in the Pacific Ocean might thank Europe because they wouldn't disappear, the air would be way more polluted because 25% of the forests worldwide would be gone. The weather would be a disaster. Because there wouldn't be Europe, the ocean currents would be confused and just go YOLO and make some places warmer and others colder. Africa would be hotter, probably uninhabitable, especially the Sahara Desert, and the North Pole would be even colder. Let's talk about the most important thing. 741 million people would drown in the Atlantic Ocean. That includes me and 33% of my viewers. Yes, I actually did the math. So that means you wouldn't be able to watch this video. From the 741 million people, only around 741,000 people would make it alive to Africa or Asia by swimming. That's definitely not gonna be me. It's probably just gonna be Spanish people and Turkish people from the Europe side of Turkey. So many immigrants are suddenly not gonna have any houses. The USA just lost all of its allies and Russia is probably gonna stop wanting to extend. The East is going to be more dominant than the USA. Actually, communism will take over the world again as China and Russia would be the main forces of the world. However, actually, now that I look into it, Russia might be useless because most of it would just be Siberia. Unless the weather would be hotter there, Russia's agricultural power could collapse. Greenland would finally be independent, well, only if USA wouldn't actually attack it right away. Because of the climate changes, the weather in Greenland would be harder. So that means you'd be able to grow food. This opens opportunities for a new country. Russia would still be the largest country in the world, while Greenland would be the 12th largest country. 674,574 islands would be eaten by the Atlantic Ocean. Canada would have the most islands, but at what cost? Major World Heritage Sites, Landmarks and Historical Artifacts would be lost, including the Coliseum, Eiffel Tower and more. This would be a devastating cultural loss for humanity. Just imagine seeing the Eiffel Tower get hit by a tsunami. Tourism would be cut in half. Africa and Asia would benefit from this. Dubai would probably be the new most visited city in the world. The global economy would dip from $105 trillion to $85 trillion. $20 trillion would just vanish. Car companies like Volkswagen, Audi, Porsche, Lamborghini, Bugatti, Skoda, Scania, Mercedes, BMW, Jeep, Citroën, Opel, Volvo, Ferrari, McLaren would all go bankrupt and stop selling. Ford, Tesla and Honda would dominate the car industry. Around 20,000 planes would all sink in the Atlantic Ocean. Over 2,000 planes would watch Europe get destroyed from the sky. But it will be very hard for them to land 
because most of the airports will be filled instantly. The real taste of pizza, pastas, croissants, baguettes, sausages, french fries and meatballs would slowly fade away. Instead, curry, burgers, kebabs or sushi will take over the world. The Pope, Sidemen, Macron, Djokovic, Mbappe, Haaland and many other known people would probably be doing challenge videos underwater. And now let's see a scenario if Europe was hit by a nuclear bomb. Boom! World financial markets would start freezing within about 10 to 25 minutes as the realization spread that not just the circuits of Europe were down, but that there was no one alive there. There would be travelers who would arrive in Europe within a few hours and most cellular and landline phones would still work. Within a few hours there would be a concern that some very contagious disease has hit Europe and all flights from Europe to the rest of the world would be diverted and quarantined. There would be an extensive consultation among the remaining nations to try to find out WTF just happened. Groups from other countries who were found near nuclear facilities would be bombed either by the US, Canada or Russia of course. Europe is a large net food producer and this will cause problems with the world food supply. France would get people from Quebec, of course, Algeria, Tahiti, Portugal would have plenty of people from Brazil and Angola, Italy could be filled with Argentinians and people from the US, Germany, Austria and Switzerland is tougher but it would have parts of Chile, Argentina, Paraguay, maybe even Namibia and maybe some ethnic Germans who are now in the far away part of Russia. The Netherlands would get people from the Caribbean, South Africa and Indonesia and the world economy would be reeling for a number of years. Europe would be viewed as a hardship assignment, basically it would have limited food options and more emphasis on work for about 20 to 30 years. And all of this information is thanks to this person, so here we go, you can check out his channel. But now let's talk historically. What if Europe didn't exist at all and the map looked like this from the beginning of humanity? The whole world wouldn't be that developed. Important inventions like the printing press, which you basically used to print books, newspapers, the telephone, yeah you wouldn't be able to flex your iPhone 69 Pro Max, cinema, World Wide Web, so that means the whole internet, at least no more AI that is gonna take my job, uh, this bro, uh, eyeglasses, radio, television would all be gone. We would still live in the pre-industrial era and most of us would be harvesting in the fields right now. So many historical wars would be avoided and East Asia might be the new Europe. We wouldn't have political concepts like democracy, capitalism, socialism and a lot more wars would happen in Africa and Asia. So no more World War II or World War I. This only means one thing, Japan or Poland would be safe. Happy them. Without Europe, a lot of countries would have spoken different languages. USA wouldn't be speaking English nor Spanish, so probably Navajo, which is a similar language to Chinese, Thai and Russian. Brazil would be speaking Amazonian languages, similar to Navajo, and Pakistan and India would be arguing in Punjabi and Hindi. Many countries, especially in Oceania, would have different flags, Australia or New Zealand for instance, because there wouldn't be Great Britain. Historically talking, South Africa would have not had their flag like this and the USA and Canada as well. Without Europe, Christianity would have not been that popular. Wheat, grapes, olives would be rarer in the world. Potatoes, sunflowers and the overall trade between countries would have been very very different. Africa would have more countries, however unless the weather would get better it would be pretty tough to live there. And finally a lot would be different. Most of the colonialism wouldn't have happened. Africa, the Americas, Australia would probably have been able to develop on their own and grow into potential strong nations without being beaten down by colonial empires. Rather than the West being the dominant culture in international spaces, I would guess either China or India would instead take this role.